I've mentioned the game against Lille. I've mentioned the game against Brentford. And I think the game against Brentford highlighted a lot of the defensive issues that I've referred to a, a little bit earlier on and throughout the season when discussing Aston Villa on different platforms. So I want to have a look at some of the goals that they conceded against Brentford because I think what they do is... Look, they don't tell you how the game's going to go at the weekend, but they do all highlight one particular weakness in this Aston Villa side. And it's something that I think we should be looking to capitalise on. That might mean us slightly adapting and adjusting the way we attack. But you know what? If that gives us what we need and creates the opportunities that we need to go on and win the game, then why not? Um, let's look at then um, Aston Villa's... Um, Shall I call it a leaky defence? This was Brentford's first goal. Brentford get down the left-hand side and there's a cross that comes into the penalty area. Now, as soon as I watched this goal back, even in the build-up to this point, alarm bells were ringing. Um, I'm someone that loves defensive play. Um, I, I really, really do. I, I know I've been critical of sides that have parked the bus. I don't think... Um, Parking the bus and being really good defensively are the same thing. I think parking the bus is what teams that lack defensively do in order to try and compensate. I think you can defend sensibly, compactly and still have the balance and be able to go out and attack teams and control possession as well. Now, when I watched this goal back, alarm bells were ringing for me in the build up to this really, really early on. The ball is on that left hand side. Brentford clip it into the penalty area and there are four Brentford players inside the penalty area. Esri Consa ha has gone out towards um, the, the crosser because he wants to potentially block the cross. And then you've got two centre-backs on the edge of the six-yard box having to deal with three players who have pushed right up onto them. Another player in Embuemo who is on the blind side of uh, Aston Villa's midfielder who's tracking back there. And then you've got a fifth Brentford player arriving on the edge of the box. They are queuing up to score here. And what this highlights to me is that Aston Villa, and I'm not saying it just because of this particular goal. I'll show you other examples in a minute as well. But something I've noticed about Aston Villa under Unai Emery, and in particular without some of their key players, they are without Douglas Louise this weekend. They are, I think, going to be out without camera, maybe. Um, but what I'm trying to say is, I've noticed an issue, an ongoing issue with Aston Villa with regards to how they track runners from deep positions. Not only in this instance are the centre-backs exposed because they've got, um, you know, three men within close proximity. There's a fourth on the blind side of the uh, midfielder who's tracking back. And then there's someone arriving on the edge of the box with not a Villa player anywhere near him. It, it just feels like they're not picking up those runs from those deeper positions. And I think that's something that Arsenal should be looking at. If I take it on to Brentford's second goal, there's a similar scenario again. The ball comes in uh, from that left-hand side again. On this occasion, and Buemo watches it come out of the air. In my opinion, he's allowed to volley this into the goal way too easily. But again, you've seen a similar situation. The two centre-backs there, or the two defenders there, one is a centre-back, one is a, a full-back who's covering. Both of them have got men to deal with. Yet, there's no extra support. You've left them one-on-one. -on -one. You've isolated them. And if you look at the edge of the box, Johan Visser and Jensen are the two guys that are entering the penalty area, entering the mix. And Visser, from his perspective, is on the right side of his man. The defender's on the wrong side. And Jensen is completely unmarked and he's ghosting into that penalty area. So again, you can see that Aston Villa are struggling in this particular game to deal with those runs from deep. If I take it on and we look at Brentford's third goal, you look at it again and again, it's about the movement. They're not able to live with the movement of Brentford's forward players. There's a cross field ball that goes out to the left wing. And at the beginning of this move, Johan Visser is positioned in between two centre backs. Now, what he ends up doing is sort of checking his run slightly and coming inside and working himself into a position where he's completely free on the edge of the six-yard box and all the crosser has to do is pick him up. There's a lack of communication in that back line at times. Um, they're not passing players on to one another in terms of who they're supposed to be marking effectively enough. And there's a lack of awareness, I think, with regards to people making those runs from slightly deep areas. So I'm not saying that this is definitely going to happen on Sunday when when Arsenal take on Aston Villa but what I'm saying is having watched them back against Brentford and having watched the game against Lille last night who also cut through them 
with ease a lot of the time due to runners coming from deep and being unmarked and picking up um, the ball in pockets of space. I think that Aston Villa have a real problem with that. Now, that might be because of the personnel that they have available at the moment. You could argue that they don't have the players that would normally take care of that issue. But at this moment in time, I feel that that is something and somewhere uh, we can expose Aston Villa. And it's something that we should definitely, definitely be looking at. Aston Villa's leaky defence at the moment for them is a problem. And tracking runs from deep has been a big, big issue.